Hello, hello. Welcome to another Funky Marketing Show. Uh, today I have a pleasure to uh, to be joined by by my good friend Vedran. You probably know him from uh, from LinkedIn or all, all over the internet. You know, like his name was kind of you know related to AutoClose first, but he was uh, you know a co-founder and if I'm not wrong, chief revenue officer. Then they got acquired by Vanilla Soft, and he was director of marketing. And recently, he's been involved with lots of different companies, uh, and basically starting something new, which is a, a startup called Lead Delta, and it has a lot to do with uh, what we're going to talk about today. But uh, first and foremost, like Vedran is my friend and uh, a person uh, that uh, I've been working with back in the days on uh, on one other startup based in, uh, it wasn't Toronto, but it was Hamilton, Canada, I think. So Vedran, welcome to the show. Hey, nice nice to be here, man. Nice to see you again. And it was awesome to catch up before before the event. Exactly. Yeah, I was in Hamilton, uh, the, the first, uh, the first uh, project, Celidra, or My Shop, it was called, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember these days, um, you know, when you just went to went to Canada and when we organized like once a month meeting with with beer and listening to music and just talking and, you know, this time only scotch. Stuff. I'm just kidding. It's water. <laughs> <laughs> water and coffee today. Yes, correct. Well, man, yeah, it's awesome. Awesome to be here. As a matter of fact, I really enjoyed your, your intro. Uh, not the intro about me. That was cool as well. But the, the show intro, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, so kudos to that. That was awesome. Yeah, trying to do something different. Actually, we are doing the redesign of the website to be in a similar manner. So, yeah, I mean, everybody is doing the same. We are trying to go in a different direction. That's... Option B, man. We'll talk about that in a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly like that. Uh, so uh, let me just check if uh, if the stream is on. Yes, everything is uh, as it should be, which is great. Uh, okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, a thing that has been an issue for most of us with the growing accounts of LinkedIn. So, you know, like managing connections, connecting with the right people, deleting the ones that aren't fit. Like back in the days, we used LinkedIn in a different way. Like people accepted uh, everybody. It was mostly a CV. They didn't care about who they are connected with. Like, And I remember back in uh, two years ago, like when I, when, I, uh, when I started Funky Marketing, like, um, or it was before, yeah, before when I started working in the Sabria market, um, I had every, everything in my feed in English, but, yeah. uh, you know, started to work in a, in a Serbian, uh, agency. I started to add some content in Serbian and then suddenly I didn't see anything in English. So I tried to find a way to get back, uh, you know, to seeing people, uh, speak, speak, speaking and writing in English. Right. Yeah, so one of the things that I have done is I deleted 3,000 people from uh, from ex-Yugoslavia, but it didn't help. So I just deleted people, uh, you know, but okay, I tried. And back in the days, like having, uh, having a help, uh, a tool or something like that that could help me manage that would be great. And even today, like we don't have it fully, but... You know, you are working on it and building it at, at, as we speak, basically. Right. Well, listen, so so Lead Delta definitely came in as a, as a set of tools to help people better manage LinkedIn. And, you know, I'd hate to leave it as, as like a tool to delete people. Right. So so it, it has too many things. Right. And um, right now we're working on Inbox. I think we're going to share it today. Just a sneak peek because uh, we are we're soon to release it. Well, it's. So what is Lead Delta today? You know, I, I like to call it like a you know your beautifully designed app to to manage your your LinkedIn connections, right? Is as simple as that. And much like everyone else, um, early on in my career, I really wanted to do big things, much like anyone else. Uh, but in order to big do big things, you need to start somewhere. You need to start small, right? Um, and and that is exactly why Lead Delta is you know in relative terms speaking 
quite successful today because we started very small. We started with a problem with an assumption that, you know, a lot of people don't have another choice other than LinkedIn for professional managing their professional network on one end. And on the other hand, they, they are just tired of spammed inboxes, getting hundreds and hundreds of messages, long, short, doesn't matter, getting things that they're not interested in. Um, their, their, their feeds have been uh, mass spam with the, you know, a lot of the same content. And as much as LinkedIn is a great company and Microsoft is a great company, and they're battling that as much as they can, a small, tiny startup could potentially do a bit more on that front. And that's exactly where we found, um, where we initiated the project uh, somewhere in 2020, just before COVID. Um, I just gathered a group of people that, that worked on some other projects and, you know, my high school buddies and whatnot. And we started working on the project, you know, in a very lean fashion, uh, you know, just trying to get some feedback, trying to, to, you know, get the users to refer the app, get some more people and get those on the bell curve, get those early adopters. Right. And that's exactly what kept uh, pushing us forward. Um, but yeah, that's the, the, the quick, the quick and dirty story of um, how Leap Delta came to be. Yeah, and I remember how how I got the access to it. You know, we've been working with Tim Paha Belgrade, and Pavle is uh, our mutual friend, and he was like, right. "Hey, I'm better, better than just send me this. I thought it can be useful for you as well." Right. And then you know that's that's how the early days are going. I'm going, you know, in most right. cases. In most cases, and interestingly enough, I remember you saying, and, and this is this is when I figured we are the right path, right? If you if you if you listen to 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 read Hoffman of, of you know, a lot of good people that um, you know are behind LinkedIn, behind big products such as LinkedIn, right? One they're saying is if 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 you if you're not embarrassed by the first version you ship, you you ship too late, right? And and we took that to heart, right? Because when we shipped Lead Delta, it did have some really cool functionalities, beautiful design. But it had uh, too many flaws. One of them being refer a friend button didn't work. And I remember you saying, "Dude, like, like, why is this not working? Right? This is this is going to help you grow." And I'm like, "I know, I know." And I was embarrassed in every single interaction. Right? Obviously, we didn't do it on purpose. We just wanted to get the ship out so that people can um, start commenting and start using it, and then we can upgrade and improve. And we kept that to date. Um, yeah, and, and I think that's an important lesson here you know so i see lots of entrepreneurs especially like ex-developers building products those kind of stuff because yeah. they they wait until they think they have the perfect product or you know right. or uh until they think they build it no, cool. and then they ask for for the feedback but you know if uh if you ship the first thing that you have that can give value and you get the feedback and you have the team that can work on the updates really fast. I mean, that's how you start building the community from the day zero. Absolutely. And, and, and community, such a key word. We can talk about it a bit later. But um, I think I think one of the really important points here is that most success stories look alike and all the failures have their own story. Right. And so I last night, uh, interestingly enough, I was talking to one of the top uh, 10 JS developers in the world. His personal opinion is that development is 20 percent of the work. And he was talking about the product and the users and the marketing and adoption and how he started the first product, which had to do something with calendar. I'm not going to go into into naming. Uh, I'm not sure if the person would feel comfortable, but they didn't have a notion of a year in a calendar. So on the first of January, you know, 2019, he actually had to go in and manually input and change the date. So that's how shitty the product was. But it had a certain feature that users cared about and he tried to test that and there's a successful SaaS today. And I would say Lead Delta was, you know, started in the very same fashion. It had a, a simple uh, table view, you know, um, to manage your first degree connections, maybe to leave some some notes like the first version of notes. Now we have a second and third version, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really important that you take it step by step. And I even like to joke. When I when I first acquired the LinkedIn extension because I acquired this, a code base for this project, I, I keep joking that we we bought the Mercedes Benz, and we turned it into a skateboard. And an important thing nice. we can we can talk about it right now. But an important thing is 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 that option B thinking because, strangely enough, most people do not go from you know thinking about the option A. They do not move forward past that option A. You know, 
oh, I can scrape LinkedIn. Oh, great. Let's scrape LinkedIn, right? Oh, I can automate every freaking thing on LinkedIn. Let's do that, right? But what happens soon, you get a cease and desist from LinkedIn, you know, very soon, you know, they shut down your profile, et cetera, et cetera. What we try to do is completely the opposite um, with Lead Delta. So, yeah. Sounds good. And I like from Mercedes to skateboard. Yeah. That, that's that's some, some analogy, you know, you don't you don't hear it every day. You go like from Mercedes to maybe, you know, like Tesla or some race car, but right. not to skateboard. Exactly, man. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's it's just that's the, uh, you know, um, and it, it just makes sense because, again, you don't know what people want. Like you're trying to build that community and Lee Delta is now 3,500 users strong. Uh, and that's active users by uh, the Chrome Web Store. Um, and 55% plus are premium, meaning they converted. And, and uh, just for the sake of the audience, uh, these are not all subscriptions because we still, until tomorrow, we offer a lifetime deal access because we just want to reward our early supporters. And then we're switching to a subscription model fully. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I, I think that's the right way to start. Yeah, uh, Catherine says, like she loves the twist on the Leo Tolstoy yeah. quote in the morning, like happy families are all alike. Every yeah. unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, let's, uh, so this is how you started. You mm -hmm. saw that there is a problem and you know, and you basically acquired uh, a back door to kind of, uh, solve it and to make a front door out of it. Like, I, I like the analogy how it came. Actually, I like it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, t tell me a little bit of you know the way uh, you saw things change and the way you you know uh, kind of the road and how you optimized. Right. Um, so, so I can I can talk because your 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 audience is, is primarily business owners, marketeers, and whatnot. And I think marketing is yeah. very 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 interesting to many people. Um, Again, A, we started with that option B, right? Um, that was that was an important thing because if you if you go to Chrome Web Store, you type in LinkedIn and you know you don't even select the, the pointers and who has the most stars and, and who is the best rated app, you will get again scraping, scraping, automation, automation, scraping, like nothing about A B option, right? And what we built, we built a connections manager very boring like nothing fancy nothing special but something that people really needed uh to have in order to manage their ever-growing networks in order to be able to leave notes assign tags in a spam free environment right that was that was our initial goal and you know if you think about it in that in that description what you have is positioning we positioned the product as you know, we love salespeople. Everyone is a salesperson. You know, we all sell some ideas, something, right? Ourselves, whatever. We're all salespeople. But this is not the project necessarily that is going to get you, you know, immediate sales results, right? Mm -hmm. Immediate event invitees, whatever, attendees, right? The, this is the long term project for people that want to nurture the network because, again, we all know that our network is our net worth, right? And so this is a place for you to manage your contact book. We started with LinkedIn. We're going to move towards uh, Google contacts and et cetera. And so we positioned the product. And this is the first project that I worked on where copy, marketing copy, really proved the product before we even went to market. Because I nice. started, with, you know, this is the LinkedIn app for CEOs, for entrepreneurs, for chiefs of staff. And that, believe it or not, attracted some of the folks such as ex-CIO Bosch, uh, Visa executives, some Silicon Valley uh, CEOs, etc. So we figured that there's a need for this, even though the product didn't match it in the beginning and maybe not even now to an extent, right? Um, and so, okay, so how did we move past, right? Like that was a question. Yeah, but that's 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 kind of interesting. Like I'm talking all the time with Marty on B2B Weekly Podcast, like, and Marty is the guy who says like, but the most important thing that I'm teaching because they are like doing copywriting for the CEOs and C-level executives, like call out your ICPs in the first sentence. Right. That's it. Like you did it and it did the job. It, it actually did the job. And honestly, I was just surprised, right? Like it, it kind of worked, 
right? And so that was that was a great thing. But then what, what I continued doing, because we assumed who are our ICPs, right? We had an assumption. Um, you know, I started having those Zoom calls with people, 15 minute calls where we do, um, you know, people to ask for a demo or something. What I would instead do is, you know, demo the product for 60 seconds because you don't need more to show the value. It's just the main pointers. Uh, but then I would get into their use cases and I kept pushing back in live communities, not our Facebook page and those places where you don't even have followers, but I penetrated other communities. And what I try doing there is teaching people that, hey, we are experts in feature building. I need use cases from you. I need past behavior, right? Like, and we talked about that. And at around 80 Zoom calls, 15 minute Zoom calls, a lot of patterns uh, emerged. Um, and I stopped doing them because, you know, I started, you know, I started getting no value from it. Right. Um, and instead what we built, we built a roadmap.leaddelta.com where you can sign up and you can leave comments, you can engage. And just for the sake of, you know, um, sharing, uh, 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 the example, I can, I can just show you real quick, if you can approve it, uh, how, how the, uh, the roadmap looks, looks like. Um, so you basically get to, you get to post a request right as a as a as a customer you describe uh the use case and if you don't do it correctly i always ask you how and then there's the roadmap of things that we need your opinion for the planned ones and then the in progress ones right like you can see that the inbox is currently a very hot thing i can officially announce that uh, we are currently in the process of approval and in the next few days you'll have the beta access to our inbox but what i'm trying to say there's a whole bunch of people here engaging and making contributions right and this is um you know this is um this is actually what you know you need to do you need to get out there and and talk to your customers and this is what we've been doing for like i think nine months continuously yeah and you know like Listening to you, it might sound like, but these guys did just, you know, the basics, right? The basics. But actually, that, that's, in most cases, that's all it takes. That's literally all it takes, right? Um, and, and just one thing to add there, you know, you, you, you talked about copy and it's really important that if the expectations you set in a co copy and, and the copy and the product were perfectly aligned. So that's, that's one of the important things, right? That, that people don't get. Like you can you can do with a copy whatever you want, but if the product is something completely different, obviously you're not gonna have a perfect match and people will churn. Um, so yeah. Expectations, something yeah. we overlook most of the times. I agree. And uh, I love that you shared there. I can relate because like when starting funky marketing, I had no idea that we were going to go into B2B space into something else, but I just talked to people like I think 60, 70 of them in two months, every day, a couple of calls. And then you see the pattern. Basically, you see what's missing. You see where there are gaps and then you just go towards it. But people don't get, you know, like this is the entrepreneurship. It's not ideas. Everybody, everyone. We all have ideas, right? But actually executing and you know getting yourself out there. I talked uh, after a conference in Sarajevo because I'm currently in the in the Balkans in the region. Um, you know when I when I had the conference the other day, you know people approached me and you know there's a ton of developers. People build products and whatnot, but you know they need to get out there. They need to talk to their customers. Like the easiest thing is actually to sit down and build what you think should be built. But like, like I, like my friend from last night said, like, it's only 20% of the work. The rest is actually being out there in the market, getting, you know, being slapped, right? Like learning it from, from people. That's, that's what's important. Yeah. Uh, cool, man. So, uh, I think we managed, we managed to get the intro in like 20 minutes. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's like full, full speed ahead. Full speed ahead. Uh, just want to say to the people feel free to to ask questions anytime we're uh looking at the chat and everything so we'll make sure to answer uh and uh you know maybe we can go and talk a little bit about what uh how actually lead delta helps helps Absolutely. people manage connections Absolutely. So I'll, I'll actually share my screen. I think it's it's much better to uh, mm -hmm. show what Lead Delta does. Let me know when you can actually see. 
Yeah, that's it. I think we Perfect. can see it. Awesome. So what you see in front of you is, is Lead Delta uh, connection stable. Um, how we do this, we have a very interesting technology on how we do this because these are your first degree connections. Well, in this case, these are my first degree connections. Um, and so you can see basically the people that I've recently connected with. Um, they're sorted by the newest. As soon as you connect with someone for the next seven days, you have this new connection tab and what you can do with it basically you can turn on the filters you can look for the uh, new connection tag and after you select those people you know you what you want what you can and you know what i like to do is you know send them a message i welcome them to my network or if there's a patterns between people because you know what we think is you should be able to send multiple messages of the same content to different people. We think that's fair, right? But what we don't think is fair is just completely blankly spamming people. And that's what we don't allow for. So what we do, you can select up to 25 connections and you can send them a message of a similar uh, context. So in this case, we can use any of my uh, my templates, you know, um, and, you know, we can we can use we can use any of these uh, and basically send the message. We only have the basic placeholders, only the first name and the last name, because again, we don't like to see the abuse where people over personalize, right? This is just a quick intro, you know, you know, we, I, this is why I connected with you or, you know, why you connected with me, reach out, you know, feel free to, to ping me, you know, whatever, whatever the thing is, but try and find the value with people that you connect with. All these people that I connected with, there's a reason I did so. Um, and so in the first, first few um, iterations, what I will do, I will manually tag these people, right? For instance, if, if there's a pattern between these four, you know, I will basically, um, I will apply a certain tag, either the one that I have or the one uh, that I will create, right? So using tags, we organize our connections. If we go to the DAG section, you can see that there's a whole bunch of tags that I created and, and people that I tagged, right? Uh, with this, um, with this, uh, in this account. So, Again, very, very important feature. Uh, one of our customers, early users, he said tags are underrated um, and you know we should definitely use more tags to organize our network. Now, another thing is you can customize your columns much like you can in any table. You can, you can, you can add contact info. In this case, I do not want to add the contact info. That's a proprietary information and personal, uh, but you can also do that too. As you can tell, out of my almost 20,000 connections, all of them are updated, meaning we have their latest email and phone number. Now, here's the key. These people already handshake with you and they gave you the right to see their email and phone number. If they haven't done so, well, you know what? We won't scrape it. We won't show it, right? So we are very complied with LinkedIn on that side. Um, how, how, do you, how do you go uh, with that? Uh, they giving you the email and the phone number? Because usually if you if you go and download the data from LinkedIn, most of them will, you know, wouldn't have those those data. It all depends. But just just a few of them would have like specific right. email or phone number. So how do you know? Well, basically, if I connect with you today, you have the option in settings to either share your con uh, contact details with me or not to share them. Right. And. You know, in, in so it's basically, if you if you gave the contact the the contact information to the LinkedIn, and give the LinkedIn the permission to share it, then if you, somebody is using little delta, little delta, they will also have the data. Almost. So you you almost got it right. So, <laughs> so 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 what do you do? Right? You 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 register in LinkedIn. You you leave your phone number, email, whatever you have, and then LinkedIn says, "Do you want to share this with your first degree connections or not?" And if you say yes the moment you and I connect, I have access to your information and, and vice versa, you have access to mine, right? So you have that option. And if you already said yes to your first degree connections, well, in that case, we will present it too, right? Otherwise we won't because some people, I, I don't want to show it because obviously, again, it's a, it's a personal information, but some people in my connection book, I have their emails and their phone numbers. And for some, I don't because they haven't you know, giving me permission to do so, yeah. right? Um, one cool thing with Lead Delta, because we have notes and we have tags, you can actually export all your connections and it takes a few seconds. Um, it, you just get a, a beautiful CSV file 
properly named that you can then reuse in any of other systems that you prefer. Now, an interesting thing, a lot of people use Lead Delta Zapier integration. Uh, one cool thing that I do uh, with Lead Delta customers, so people that become customers and I tag them with customers, uh, basically you would use a Lead Delta Zapier integration to push the data automatically from Lead Delta to a spreadsheet. And then I use this simple tool, Mail Meteor, um, that sends personalized messages and emails to my customer base, right? That's what I use sometimes when I want to send personalized messages to my customers. So that is a very cool, tiny little integration that, that you have. Um, the templates can be reused in Gmails. Everywhere where you go, you just right hand click and there's an option to select Lead Delta template. So if you go to Facebook, you want to use one of your templates, message templates that you can create here. This is this is basically what you what you can do. Now, there's a whole bunch of other things. I'll just I'll, I'll skim through them real quick. Uh, when you select your connection, so let's select a few contacts here. Uh, you can basically hide and hide connections. You can remove text. You can follow and follow the person. I think that's quite useful for some people like, you know, I just uh, I'm not necessarily interested in topics that they write about, so I can unfollow them or I can refollow some of the folks that I have. Right. And then I also have the option to disconnect and remove. And this is where we ask you, do you want to disconnect with them on LinkedIn and remove them from Lead Delta or you want to keep them in Lead Delta? And this is how that would look like. Right. If I go to, to filters and I go to my disconnected connections, um, you can see all the people that I disconnected with or they disconnected with me, et cetera. So those are a couple of things that I think, um, you know, um, are, are pretty cool, uh, in my opinion. Now, let me just let me just add an information. I don't know if people know, but today, if you connect with someone, it doesn't mean that you're going to follow them automatically on LinkedIn. You need to click also on follow. And if you don't click the follow, it doesn't mean that you will see their content. And that's why I think that's a cool feature that you can actually see, you know, if you have already tagged some people that are important for you, that you had interaction with, like you can just follow them and then it will make you, uh, it will make you see their content in the feed. So that's, that's a very good point. Um, another thing that we have here for you, again, a very no frills, easy option to apply notes. Um, so you can, you can uh, easily edit and update your notes. You can delete notes. You can add multiple notes. And then you can obviously export them into other tools, again, either by just downloading it or using Zapier or Pabli integrations that we currently have. Um, so those are, those are some of the things that, you know, uh, that I think you, 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 you know, your users or your, your followers might find interesting. And I think a lot of people have uh, looked into our inbox, right? So we've been talking about inbox for a while now um, it took us a month to develop it and again it's a no feels very first basic version of what we want to do so basically um you know with, with no further ado i'll actually just share the, the the inbox and how it looks like again it's a very this is our chat this is a very simple way to to conduct inbox this is currently on our development server so that's why uh, my trial expired and i'm playing around with this i probably cannot send you a message because my trial expired but nonetheless very very easy uh simple overview of your inbox the best part and at this point to me this is the best part we do not store your messages if you log out of linkedin we won't store your messages so this is super safe um super safe, uh, you know, super straightforward messaging system that now you will have inside your lead delta. Now, again, this is a very no frills version of inbox. Uh, what we are aiming to build and we're going to do it in the second and the third version is basically this. Uh, you will have the ability to use your lead delta tags. You'll be able to pin messages. You will be able to see the data about the person, add notes, remove notes and all that funky stuff that you already are used to inside your lead delta at the moment it's a very very basic version we just wanted to make sure that you have the messages that you need um so with that i will uh, stop sharing my screen um and i'm uh, interested in your thoughts Nemanja. I mean, you, you said lots of things and you showed us lots of things. <laughs> right. And I'm, I'm listening and I'm like thinking of how can I use uh, all of those stuff for us and for the clients and for all different purposes. Because like 
I think people underestimate the communication inside the inbox on LinkedIn. I think that's one of the most important parts of building a relationship with somebody. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and having that limit of like 25 messages, it allows you to, to do like, for example, I'm connecting with people and I'm like waiting two weeks uh, for them to consume the content. Then I'm sending them the message. But the first message that I'm sending is just, Hey, nice to, uh, nice connecting with you. I just wanted to uh, drop a line and say hi. Nothing else. Uh, that's my first message because I just wanted to open the conversation. And like based on that, you can get the second message that uh, you can get straight into the tax or whatever it is. You know, if somebody is not interested, if somebody is interested in communication, maybe ritual coffee, or if somebody is interested in the services, or you get into the discussion of how they're developing the business. For example, like I can see that you can go straight into differentiating uh, those people based on the, the second message you get from them. And, and, and it's twofold what you're just describing. This is a, a use case, right? There are lots of use cases. I, I have podcast hosts. I have researchers. I have executive HRs that were leaning on spreadsheets for years. And they put their trust into Lead Delta because now they're finally f having a tool that they can use on their own terms. So th there are CEOs, cheese of staff. So there's a lot of use cases. And now here comes the part. I was busy and lazy to build those use cases on the website. And, 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 but also, I was a little bit forward thinking and I let users define those use cases. So not fully lazy. Um, so, so in the next few weeks, we will have different case studies and use cases we'll be sharing on the website, how people are finding Lead Delta, how they're using it. For instance, Catherine is, is one of our uh, lovely users and, and customers, early customers and fans and supporters. So so huge shout out to, to Catherine. Um, and I see that she's uh, super excited about the inbox. I know that it's a very bare bone. Again, I'm embarrassed. It's a very bare bone version of inbox, but we will improve on it and uh, we will, we will uh, ship even better second and third version. So, um, so yeah. Yeah. She asked actually asked a couple of questions. Like maybe we can go through some of them. What's the most efficient way to set up tags and tag all of your connections? At the moment, uh, there are a couple, there are actually two automated tags. One is when you disconnect and the other one is when you become a new, uh, it's a workflow when, when you have a new connection, right? The rest. Um, it really depends on your preferences. So I'll give you a couple of use cases. One is, you know, we do have some executive sales guys and they like to have a pipeline, right? So they have tags, you know, prospect, you know, negotiations, work in progress and, you know, close done right? Or lost deals or whatever. So that's one way of doing it. I know that podcast hosts have a very similar uh, notion of, um, I call it like a Trello Kanban methodology where, you know, they say, you know, these are the prospects, people that I'd like to see on a podcast. These, these are the guests that I had on a podcast. And, you know, now they're wondering and asking, when can we get reminders so that I can set my own dashboard and reminders to ping these people again to show in an episode, right? So that's another use case. Um, I have some high profile um, serial entrepreneurs that use tags only to distinguish between their fellow entrepreneurs, customers, and angel investors or investors as a, as a broad category. So that's how they organize tags. I'm a little bit all over the place. I have sales. I have my lead Delta customers. I have, uh, you know, uh, prospects, friends, entrepreneurs, top level entrepreneurs, like different, different folks, right? Because the communication changes a little bit. It varies between people and there's no easy way to set them up, I would say. Uh, so you use filters, you filter down the list of people that you prefer or you want to tag and you just go and tag them. So uh, the best, the best option is to outsource that to someone, but uh, I did it <laughs> myself. So uh, I recommend it too. Yes, sounds good. Catherine is excited. I guess, you know, you we can too. see right right at the spot how our users reacting that's, to the that's, news. <laughs> beautiful. Exactly. That's awesome. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to, to have you guys here with us. So tell me, tell me what are the next steps? So uh, you mentioned the inbox, unraveling and everything else. So what are some of the next steps for, for you guys? 
Right. So the, the next immediate thing, um, I, I should also mention that at the moment we're we're looking uh, to hire a full time head of growth and we're looking to hire full time uh, senior full stack engineer, um, meaning we are um, uh, meaning we are quite, uh, you know, self-sustainable at the moment and we are just looking to grow. Um, Needless to say, the the next important thing that's also on our on our roadmap, the big thing, the big feature is Teams, um, where we will be able to augment augment a certain data uh, to provide proper signals for Teams to act upon. Um, meaning, we want to go a little bit up market. Mm -hmm. um, so between the inbox and Teams, like we will see which features will uh, you know. Uh, uh, which features will be used more um, and based on that we'll make other decisions. However, I'm super personally excited about the notion of a dashboard, having a main dashboard with some stats about my connections and my messages in there. Plus, I'm excited about reminders and notes. People keep asking us, I'll, I'll give a I'll give a quick example of what the reminders are not. Um, so people keep asking us, why don't you have automated birthday wishes uh, or job changes? And one of the reasons for that is because it's a freaking spam. So when I changed my role, I received probably about 200 to 300 messages in my inbox that are just all the same. Like literally there's 1% of a difference. So we'll never do these things that uh, provide more noise and spam. We want to do signal, uh, more signaling than noise. Yeah. And listen, reading, I think it was last week. Richard van der Bloom's uh, insights about the LinkedIn. It says like those um, things like happy birthday, kudos, and all those things that LinkedIn gives you right right ahead uh, had so low engagement there. It's actually stupid to use them at all. Absolutely, you know, it's 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 honestly it's just uh, for a lot of people. It's just they feel that they're busy and that they are doing something. But the question is, what's what's the effect of that, right? Um, and so we we prefer, we love everyone and everyone's welcome to test lead Delta, but we prefer to have people that want to be effective and want to use um, uh, tools that their benefits, not to produce more noise. Yeah, sounds good. So I, I, have, I have a question which is not yes. related directly to the lead Delta. So maybe before that, uh, you can tell us what's happening tomorrow. There's a deadline. There is a deadline. So folks, um, uh, you know, we were very serious about our deadlines. Uh, we, we do what we like to say, honest marketing. So, um, this time there is a high likelihood that we will not, uh, extend the deadline for getting the lifetime deals. So this is the last opportunity to actually get a lifetime deal, support the project and actually get uh, a potentially a huge upside. Uh, by by getting a, a license to lead Delta with future updates for for um, uh, for a fixed amount a uh, lifetime amount um, moving forward uh, in the next few days the only option will be to buy a subscription um, and the subscription will go up um, um, so so yeah like do do make sure to to grab it um, I do not think that you will be able to get a lifetime deal anytime soon uh, through lead Delta. Yeah, we'll we'll make sure to to have the info uh, in the comments uh, and in the description of of this when we, you know, post it on on uh, on YouTube and on the, the audio platforms. You know that but, this is a live event, right? Because usually people reply and respond and they're on there, but this is a live yeah. event. We do not reply. We'll do it later. <laughs> and it's and it's actually uh, you know, uh, and there's just one one day. To do it so we'll try to distribute this on a couple of places but if you are watching this right now anytime that you watch this it's if you want to get you know a lifetime deal for elite delta this is the time to act uh, and then when yeah I'll, I'll so so i'll describe a fair marketing the fair mm -hmm. marketing is what is actually happening behind the, the the behind in the back office right and what's happening in the back office there is a very small chance that uh, we will extend the deadline because of the Google approval of inbox. Um, and so Nemanja, what I was doing before, I used to tell people the code will expire, but you know, next week we're going to do another code because, you know, I, I like to set the right expectations. So again, you have 24 hours, 
there is a slight chance that we will increase that deadline, but do not uh, miss that opportunity because I am a man of my word. Um, yeah, and also one more thing I got to tell you, like if you are listening to this and you want to apply and deadline uh, is gone, code is not working, like there's a slight opportunity that you can maybe ping Vedran and he maybe approve you for this if you're really interesting or, you know, like since you have been watching the funky marketing show let's let's make it a, let's make it a super simple if lead delta that's double d lead as a leadership dot delta well lead delta.com slash lifetime and if you still have that uh page up then you probably can claim it uh and if not then you miss the opportunity but uh there'll be plenty more in the subscription uh inside lead delta so there you go Sounds good. Sounds Perfect. good. So um, I see we have Nicola here from Joberty. Uh, and uh, actually, I had a question which is related to all of this. Like, um, maybe you can you can share with with me with us uh, a little something of how it is in working with you know first you work with with Isaac, building a huge student organization. Then you move into the startup world. You build a startup, then you were part of uh, the acquired startup, then you actually work for a larger company, and then you're again building building something and working as a you know as a consultant. So uh, a little bit of experience how it is working in all those different kind of oh, man. environments. So you want to? Is this? Uh, the, uh, should we have a second part? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely um, have one. <laughs> right. Well, uh, what what can I like? It's um, you know, it's it's a journey of of learning um, and and you know just trial and error. Um, I I really never got discouraged with so many you know uh, stones thrown. Um, it's just the nature of business and of inexperience. And you know when you have less experience, luck does not tend to be your friend. Uh, which is you just need to push through, right? And so, uh, but you also need to kind of know what you want. And in order to know what you want, you got to go through, you know, trial and error. And so um, basically my, my career started like I, you know, when I, when I was a student, right? Like I, I figured that, you know, just studying at the university is not enough and it's not what attracted me quite the opposite. So I joined the organization that promised a lot, like didn't pay anything basically, but you attended conferences, you learned from people like Coca-Cola, national banks, uh, executives and, and whatnot. And so you did learn a very practical way of, you know, how things are done in the real world. But on, on, on top of that, you actually had to, to lead the people, like to, to organize planning, organize conference, make money, otherwise the office would go bankrupt and whatnot. Like we traveled a bit, quite a bit around the world, made friends, and you know, most of these folks turned to be entrepreneur, entrepreneurs. So, you know, that's what really helped quite a bit. I moved that into digital, been there for a while. You know, I started doing Facebook ads when, you know, you had like literally three options within, within Facebook ads and and you know wrote blogs and, you know, we built the biggest corporate blog back then in, in Serbia. And so after that, I moved to Austria, worked there, worked on a really high, um, you know, high value projects with some really high profile folks such as, you know, GM of Cisco, National Bank um, 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 governor and whatnot, like really big companies. But then I figured, you know, I'm not really passionate about this, like I want to build things. So I went back to my to my hometown, like I even lived with my parents for a little while. Um, you know, I basically scaled back my lifestyle. And what I started doing is, you know, I started working with with tech guys and I started at the very, very bottom of that hierarchy, um, meaning, you know, we just started. We didn't even know what we were doing, like we were trying to sell software. And, and you know, that was that was the initial part. Um, we progressed. I moved into a consultant later on when I learned my lessons and, you know, then I decided to move into an actual product. I, I built people, a product for other people. Now I wanted to build something of my own. Um, and again, it's a very long story where, where, you know, the first business failed. I was almost like at the verge of a bankruptcy. Um, very soon I joined as, as a fourth uh, co-founder of another business. Two years later, we, we sold that business. It was a success. You know, now I again started, I was a part of a corporate of a bigger company, 
you know, learn my lessons there, figure out that I'm a builder. I like to build. I like to surround myself with people like that. So I came back to um, square one and, you know, uh, to, to kind of try and build uh, new ventures again. So, yeah, that's a <laughs> very long story short. Yeah, that's that's good. You manage it in the in like two minutes. So <laughs> there you go, <laughs> there you go. But the, the most important thing is like, and I'll just add this, and and I think this is an important thing to 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 mention. And again, this is very fresh because I was preparing a presentation for a for a very interesting conference. And you know, when you go on these conferences, it's only natural to to tap yourself on the back and to show to people, oh, this is what I've achieved, this is what I've done, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that's not the point. Um, my goal is always to show, you know, to people that if I've done it, you can do it too, right? And then show the specific step. That's why I don't like getting into these in two, three minutes uh, rails. Um, uh, you know, what I like to do is actually show you the steps on how you can do it too and decisions, the hard decisions that I had to make to be where I am today, uh, which is very achievable by any one of you listening. Um, and so that is, yeah, that is the big exactly, exactly the conversation I had yesterday because... You know, uh, I'm one of the speakers on the Conversia conference mm -hmm. in Benelux next year. Richard. And like we were talking about the topic and I said, let's talk, uh, you know, about I'll share uh, my roadmap and everything, how we get from zero to 25K MRR in 18 months. And, you know, Nadim, the organizer, were like, hmm. just like can we not go into you know self-promotion and talking about how you do, like no it's not self-promotion i'm gonna give them the specific steps they can do to achieve it because i didn't do anything you know revolutionary i just you know talk to potential clients to the customers i get to know them and i just implement the roadmap in the way that they consume the content at the right time in the right place and that's it basically right Absolutely. I think that's that's really important to, to share your story as it is, uh, not just the outcomes, right? But how you reach those milestones. I think that's very important. So sounds good, man. Sounds good, man. We are awesome. uh, close to the end. So anything you want to say for the end, something we missed or something that you know you just want to say somewhere you want to direct the people. Actually, we already did that, but anyway. Right. We already did that. Well, you know, I just invite everyone to to feel free to connect uh, and uh, send a message via LinkedIn and, uh, you know, ask me anything. Um, other than that, I'm a, an easy guy to find on Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever you guys go, I'm probably there. Um, so, yeah, that's that. I think we covered most of the points. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, okay, guys, uh, veteran, thank you for uh, for joining me. Thank you for giving the insights and presenting all the all the great work you're doing with the Delta. Appreciate uh, it. I'm sure we're gonna have another one in the next months where we're gonna talk more about you know uh, about your journey and all the specific related to you know building a product and building a team and all those other stuff. Uh, but. Guys, it's been another funky marketing show. Thanks for being here. Thanks for, uh, you know, staying with us until the end. Uh, and talking the next days again, I think we're going to have uh, lots of guests in the, in the next couple of weeks. Great show, man. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you all for watching. Bye-bye, guys. Keep it funky. Bye. Keep it funky. Bye.